Hi everyone, I'm Kavini Nanakkara, working as a new UX intern. Today, uh, me and Manoj will be going to discuss about uh, UI UX principles and practices. So here's the agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to discuss about organizing visual information using colors and contrast typography. And Manoj will discuss about stakeholder interviews, user interviews, design thinking process, usability testing, field studies, and sort analysis. In here, first I will explain about how uh, we can organize visual information in UI. In here, I will mainly focus on four principles, uh, balancing, rhythm, harmony, and dominance. The first one is balancing. This means arranging positive elements and negative space. So both the areas not going to overpower the others. It makes sure everything works together and fits together. When a design is unbalanced, the individual elements compete with each other and the, every element is calling for attention. In this example, attention is drawing to the individual elements instead of clarifying how they related to each other. It's very uh, difficult to look at this like because uh, it's uh, there's too much negative space between the elements and also the related items don't hold together as you can see um, so the user will distract and the eyes constantly to going here and there between the individual elements now i'll show you the redesigned ui in here you can see every element belongs to belongs to its own category and the above navigation bar items all together and reduce the negative space uh, than the previous one. And also the content below, the image uh, and the article titles and the links below all together as a category. And this prevents the back and forth that I told before uh, where people feel confused. In here, I will explain the, about rhythm. This occurs when the intervals between elements are predictable and similar in size shape and length. Uh, when elements repeat at regular intervals, the visual rhythm speeds identification and uh, identification of content and the user's ability to quickly infer what those elements uh, mean and uh, what they do. Here I have given an example, a LinkedIn UI uh, on an iPhone. Um, so in this layout, uh, rhythms work like this. Those elements are all related because all the details are same type of in information and uh, follows the same rhythm. You can see a person's picture, name, and the summary of the message. So it's uh, it's going like a rhythm, like one, two, three, one, two, three, if we uh, number this. So it's like, looks like constant, consistent, and repeated. In here, we'll talk about harmony. And um, when uh, visual elements are in harmony, they relate to and complement each other. I will explain it with the below image. These blocks working in harmony with each other. The blocks are aligned on both horizontal and uh, vertical axis. There's the same amount of negative space between the blocks and uh, text points in the box and all the topics. And even the box lengths are different. That consistency, uh, harmony, the negative space uh, calls them to together. As you can see, in here, I will explain about dominance. Greater size equals greater dominance, as well as uh, more contrast equals more dominance. So if there's a small element has more contrast than the larger shape, definitely the smaller shape gets attention. So also more negative space equals more dominance. Let's see uh, the below example. In this UI, uh, obviously the red shoe in the middle is the most dominant element because of the too much uh, negative space around the shoe. In addition to that, the white text on the left side like stands out in the red background because of the contrast. In here, I will explain how we can use uh, colors and contrast in, uh, in a proper way. In this section, first I will discuss some common associations to uh, consider when choosing a color. Uh, every color has certain universal associations. Black refers to authority, power, elegance, and white uh, refers to innocence, purity, cleanliness, and red refers to alarm, urgency, attention, pink refers to romance, gratitude, grace, and a blue, peaceful sky, ocean, business, technology, and so on. I'm not going to explain all the things. Next, uh, Next thing we need to consider is emotional impact when selecting colors for the UI. As an example, uh, seeing red has a psychological impact. It's been proven to increase the uh, blood circulation and breathing metabolism. 
in this below illustration they have combined red with the with the, this typography to convey a powerful message and the contrast here is uh, like screaming for attention when you see that see this picture you can hear the picture as i said before uh, red refers to urgency and attention so here red is being used to communicate a very urgent message and at the same time about the importance so you know this provokes a response who for the from the people who see this let's look into another example next slide here they have used blue color uh, blue tends to have a you know, calming and inviting effect because uh, it associates with uh, sky and water here's a tech company and when you see this it's con conveying the message message in a uh, like in a very calm manner the blue color and the typography has everything to do with that so most famous technology brands like skype ibm dell use blue color for the branding because uh, it's like building trust let's move to another example in here uh, as i told before uh, green is green is associ associated with uh, success Uh, growth and money so the sap monitors uh, investments and stocks they have used green which uh, which gives like pleasant calming view and there's no accent color only black gray and green when users use this they will find like calm feeling control purposeful and feels like good things are happening in here i will discuss about Uh, how to choose colors from the world around us there are color combinations uh, in every image we see everything you see contains a uh, color variants those those, col uh, those color variants are uh, shadow mid tones highlights and accents uh, you can see in this image uh, the darker area represents shadow and the blue area represents mid tone color uh, mid tone colors are Uh, in the middle of the tonal spectrum so it's between light and dark and uh, we can point out uh, the lighter area in the bowl as the highlight color and the accent is the uh, this uh, green color which stand out uh, it stand out from the all the colors and the accent colors are used to like emphasize uh, uh, for contrast and so on so now you have a color scheme consists of uh, four colors uh, we can use this uh, as a color scheme for a ui design yes not uh, there are another two examples i have included here uh, as you can see four color variants from the picture uh, extracted and uh, we can use those color schemes for ui uh, i'm not going to explain this again uh, same as the previous one in here i will discuss about typography how we can use uh, typography uh, correctly for the ui and uh, there are seven rules for typography and uh, we need to follow up um first one is uh, we have to use a uh, maximum two type faces for the ui character with some weights of the uh, of e each font should be complementary to each other uh, as an example i have uh, shown here um, uh these two have similar character widths and uh, it creates a visual harmony uh, and the coding coding means the distance between letters letters uh, so it's also similar uh, but the shape of the letters are different uh, and there uh, also there should be a visual difference because otherwise there's no point of using a second font and next slide here um I have added two examples. Uh, uh, the left image includes so many different uh, typography, six type of uh, six different typography, and um, there's no clear sign of uh, heading, subheadings, interactive element is also not clear. So it feels like a bunch of uh, unrelated information. The right side image is uh, shows the correct way of using typography. Uh, one font for the uh, heading and the uh, and another font for the supplementary information so as you can see it's very consistent simple and next slide the next rule is uh, limit the line width uh, when uh, line lengths are wide uh, it's harder to uh, track the text 
uh, follow uh, like uh, find it's harder to find the beginning of the next slide so for this matter there's a standard character count per line 60 characters per line is the common standard and 30 to 40 characters per line uh, for the mobile devices uh, next slide the next rule is uh, juice readability of other things uh, text will be used at various sizes in the UI, from headlines to body text and form labels to buttons and so on. The typefaces we uh, we choose have to be readable at all of those sizes. As uh, users, we design in different devices with different screen sizes and resolutions. So here I have uh, included an example from Android website. In both web, uh, web and mobile, uh, text is readable as you can see next slide and the next rule is choose legibility legibility means making sure all letter forms are clearly distinguishable uh, in your typeface i'll explain with an example uh let in this uh, you can see the letter l looks like i so this can happen when some fonts have uh, poorly specified kerning and uh, the uh, below example you can see the n uh, like an m and the next uh, rule is uh, using uh, space between paragraphs uh, visual breaks between paragraphs uh, give the eyes a place to rest that will speeds understanding and comprehension and a widely cited study found that the use of white space between paragraphs increases uh, comprehension by almost 20%. So the space between the lines should be at least equal to uh, the half of the character height. Uh, you can see an example. Mm. The next uh, rule is align text elements in layout using baseline. Uh, when there are multiple text elements on a single screen, uh, they should all share points of common alignment. And uh, this helps to keep the layout ordered and uh, makes it easy to easy and quick to track. Uh, so always make sure to use baseline uh, when aligning uh, text elements. Uh, the next rule is using styles to visually differentiate content. When choosing when choosing a typeface uh, that should have at least three styles. Uh, normally regular italic and ball uh, we can use those styles to differentiate type of content uh, most commonly this happens when differentiating headings subheadings on the body text in the below example they have used three different styles of the same font uh, just to differentiate the content so that's it uh, next manoj will continue the presentation Thank you, Kavini. Good morning, all of you. Uh, my name is Manoj Dharmardana, and as intern UI UX at One Billion Technology. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about few of UX design practi practices and techniques. Um, okay, let's go. Um, first one is stakeholders interviews. Stakeholder interviews are big uh, deal in UX design. Uh, they help establish uh, the foundations for any project by providing value valuable insights. Uh, what is actually stakeholders interviews are? Uh, stakeholders interviews are one-on-one -on -one conversation with people who have vested interest in the success uh, of the product we are working on. A stakeholder. Stakeholder is anyone within an organization who can offer uh, useful advice about the product and ultimately help simplify the design process. Other than that, stakeholders rely on the product success for their uh, personal or professional gain. So uh, let's see, uh, check what, what the benefits of stakeholders' interviews. Defining goals and objectives. By holding stakeholders' interviews, we can get a clearer idea about the scope and parameters from multiple stakeholders. Uh, next one is improving communication. Speak closely with stakeholders is perfect way to know the people behind the project scenes behind the scenes collaboration and uh, good report with stakeholders will also give us better help for validating our design efforts and next thing is earning trust showing stakeholders 
that their opinions matters are the opportunity to earn their trust and also that will give us uh, good data to keep the process of designing the next thing uh, is user interviews a user interviews uh, interview is a common user research technique used typically to get qualitative information from existing users uh, user interviews helps use ux designer better understand their users users emotions and opinions this technique is especially useful when the target audience is new or unknown to ui ux team user interviews are most commonly conducted before the design begins but uh, they can occur at any stage of this development process however uh, user interviews are most useful at the beginning of the development process in the beginning we can determine what kind of path we design should follow uh, user interviews are an important step in the design thinking process also uh, this technique can be used in three different places empathize ideate and testing Emp empathize means empathize and understand the user view view of points about about a specific problem ideate is get an idea about how we would solve a specific problem that that the user is facing our target uh, audience was facing facing uh, in testing we can test a prototype to make sure that the solution that we have created is usable for our target audience uh, next is usability testing usability testing is the observation of users trying to carry out tasks with the product testing can be focused on single process or uh, be much more than wide ranging why we conduct usability test the girls goals of usability testing vary by study uh, but uh, they usually include identify uh, identifying the problem in the designs of the product or service and another uh, another thing is uh, uncovering opportunities to improve uh, other thing is learning about the target user users behavior and preferences uh, there are few usability testing methods first one is a b testing uh, a b testing is offering alternative versions of a product to different users and comparing the result in order to find out which one performs better this is a great technique for optim optimizing funnels and landing pages uh, next one is gorilla testing gorilla testing is one of the simplest form forms of user testing Mm, using guerrilla testing usually means going into a coffee shop or another public place to ask uh, people they are uh, about the about our product or prototype uh, it can be conducted anywhere like uh, cafe library uh, train station like that uh, but essentially anywhere uh, we can find a relevant audience relevant target audience next one is field studies field studies are research activities that take place in, uh, in the users context rather than in our uh, office or uh, lab uh, ux researchers are responsible for learning about users their goals challenges like uh, activities uh, and uh, for bringing that understanding to the uh, product team, UI UX team. Uh, so uh, ob observing people in their natural environment allows us to learn learn the unexpe unexpected and uh, to understand how well system work when people are distracted in uh, no noisy places and in normal situations for them, such as with family, uh, social or uh, work groups we need to understand how groups of people behave for example to find out how they collaborate interrupt and communicate or watch people uh, use systems workflows and tools together with many people in the mix we can observe a wide range of behavior knowledge 
experience and concerns. Next one is SOT analysis. SOT analysis is strategic planning method based on four elements, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The SOT framework helps uh, uh, us evaluate the internal and external factors that impact our product or design decisions. Internal means strengths and weaknesses. External factors include opportunities and threats. So it is often used in strategic planning to help identify potential competitive advantage. Uh, it is a popular method in UX competitive analysis because uh, it can quickly reveal product issues and determine a course of action. So uh, those are few techniques uh, used by UI UX researchers and also designers. Other than these, there are more advanced techniques uh, and best practices. Uh, so as the end, we can wind up the session and uh, is there any problem regarding these uh, points, uh, please contact us. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for your participation.